FM 90.1, KCFR Chico. That was good stuff, Jeff. Thank you. Um, Who were your influences? Uh, it's so hard to say because, uh, like I said, the only thing that I would say now is I like everything I've ever heard except for modern day country. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I like um, all, all kinds of music and I've continued to listen to music. Um, I don't, I, I never stop trying to find new artists. So I've been doing that for a long time. Um, so I think I'm influenced by everything in a way. I don't know. Music's fun. Uh, I've been doing it since I was a kid and got a guitar um, like maybe 20 years ago or something and self-taught just uh, I'm not really a great guitarist I'm just I play for rhythm singing is what I really really enjoy um, so yeah should I do another I would song? love you to do another song let's let's do it all right I'm gonna do one this one's about uh, this one's the other one was about Chico band it's funny that that like a lot of the the influence of of how bands live performances has affected me is kind of um, over the top it's like okay okay we get your point yes band. this one is actually called chico music scene and it's about sounds coming out of chico all right foxy jeff right here on fm 90.1 <laughs> Jeff in the studio so what are we what are we gonna hear next well first of all I wanted to give a shout out to my niece who turned 18 today she's coming to Chico from Gridley and uh, we're gonna be hanging out after this uh, so she think she's out. listening um, I'm not sure but there's an archive that I can mm -hmm. post later okay anybody um, else you want to say hi to out there that could be listening online oh, or man, everybody uh, we got to give Julian some support today too. Man. come out to the Maltese today Jimmy Reno <laughs> uh, is gonna be playing um, along with S oh, no Esco Chris um, actually had to cancel but um, we have lucky Luke aka filthy Luke and um, nothing left as well as uh, it's going to be a great show. There's a lot of great shows going tonight. It's ridiculous. And I'd like to also mention, as we got as as happens every Saturday night down at Scotty's from like five to nine oh, or ten right. p.m. Jonathan Arthur. Yeah, we've got uh, well at Scotty's. Uh, Keith Kendall usually oh, okay. helps uh, put together a nice uh, music from showcase, Kumos, and right. a lot of our good friends go down there and play. And some magic happens sometimes. Nice. And during the the winter, it's inside, so uh, there's fireplace going and all that. Go down there. Got good food and drinks, and uh, also, as we mentioned, Jonathan Arthur yeah. is going to be at uh, Nash's. Nash's from three to six for his CD release. Yeah. So you know that's eight that's the early process, stuff. Right? Eight, eight, yeah. <laughs> and that's the early stuff, and then He's after like, that, that the Maltese, right? And uh, yeah, Maltese. I'll be down there making a music video for Jimmy Reno, uh, so that'll be fun. And then. Um, Next week, um, there's a new winery opening in Durham. Um, uh, there's hundreds of people already saying they're going to that thing, and it's because it's they're giving free food and stuff. Mm -hmm. Get your whole crew down there without a roof. <laughs> Come on down. Uh, see Leah and Cooley, Black Slacks, and then um, Julian and I will both be playing separately on uh, February 1st at Habitat Lab. That's at 199 East 13th Street kind of off a of park out like uh, next to the Jesus Center all right so but this song I'm gonna do right now is about society yes this is uh, <laughs> this is what society makes me feel so you kind of want to listen to the words maybe it's kind of deep in a way Foxy Jeff on FM 90.1 <laughs> Oh, I mean. 
simple music um, when I was a kid I had a little keyboard that you just basically would push a button and it would do a whole rhythm itself you know I'm making it and then you can go up and I and I love that and that music was the best stuff I ever made on cassette tapes and um, and so I like really simple. I like when it's, there's just you know three or so, four chords. So Get Foxy Productions was uh, I was filming a lot. I think after the aneurysm, I started filming things that I thought were fun so that I can remember them because my memory was like pretty bad. So I would just start you know filming family stuff, just like camping and anything that family would do for fun. I got really like kind of obtrusive about it and and through maybe about two or three years filming became so normal to me that I don't even notice it like people continually have to surprise me with the fact that oh, I don't want to be filmed I, I, I just it doesn't because I've been filming so much and and have terabytes and terabytes worth of video that I haven't even seen yet I haven't even really grasped the concept that people don't want to be filmed I can understand it though because I don't even want to be filmed. <laughs> yeah. If you go to get Foxy Productions, you'll rarely see me on there because every time I see myself on there, I'm like, I look like a total idiot. I look like a freak. Like, <laughs> and hey, you know what? It's funny because that's exactly how I feel. But you know what's cool is, you know, years later you can look us. back. You know, so we probably all feel that way. Yeah. You know, but probably. but you know, I want to tell you that you created one of the most cool moments for me in my life, and. You had a big hand. Well, you did it, you know, and it, and it made me feel so good, and it was so was such a trip, you know. You don't remember we were drunk? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Definitely. you used a clip of me. You came down and used a clip of, of me in this show, like, for your film. Yeah. And it was so weird for me, and it was so cool at the same time, and really it's not like a, you know, but it was a big deal for me. You might not have seen that before, but you, yeah, you were at the but pageant. I, I got to go to the pageant theater, stand in line, buy a ticket, and go screen. sit down and... and <laughs> You know, I wanted to go cringe when I saw myself, but at the same time, it was like, wow, this is really cool, you know. Yeah. So I got to watch, you know, and not like, oh, I want to. And so many people got to see But it was you. such a nice thing, and I got to see all my friends, you know, in yeah. there. A lot of those people were my friends. Yeah. And it was such a cool thing. So yeah. I appreciate, you know, that was, you know, kind of one of those surreal moments. Yeah, and, I really feel it's important to collaborate with other people. Uh, we can't really do, really, I mean, we can do great things on our own, but we can do even better things with with the larger the group that we get involved. And so it's like Julian, uh, the, the whole crew that we have, um, I'm, not, I'm not really like a, a salesy person. I'm not a business person at all. 
Um, I actually hate money, but <laughs> it's necessity. Yeah. But people I'm collaborating with do understand all that, and and that is, and reality is important to them, and I need that. In this community, there's a lot of uh, support with musicians with each other, and yeah. we all have our you know issues here and there. But that's you know, yeah, for the that's most really part. important. Is Chico? I've been really thinking about that a lot. Is the different dynamic that Chico is compared to other places? It's like people stay here for a quality of life that could actually move on and do big things if they wanted in like L.A. or the Bay Area even. But they stay here because um, they're not really trying to get big and famous and rich and all that. Uh, so it's a better quality of life. We're more like a family here in Chico in a way. We're, we're big enough to not really be a family, but small enough to kind of, yeah, um, be able to know a lot of people and all that. I love it that there's uh, enough people that we can do this show and I can still have people on here that I've never met, you know, yeah, that's or true. people like you that I've met, but we've never gotten to a spot. Yeah. Like you. I have a lot of so. acquaint acquaintances, but not that many friends, actually. I have <laughs> hundreds of acquaintances. Yeah. What well, would you like to do a song? This is a, yes. we got Foxy Jeff I always studio. want to do a song. That's <laughs> the only thing that I actually enjoy. Doing well, we've got about a half hour left. You're listening to FM 90.1 KZFR Chico. My name is Brad Peterson. It's about two 30. I have Foxy Jeff in the studio and Studio 416 is made possible by the generous contributions of KZFR members and by Satava Art Glass Studio. This next one I do though, I actually wrote half of it when I was 10 and uh, the other half when I was like 20. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, and, and I just haven't really used the lyrics. I wrote more songs than I actually made through my life. Um, so I still have tons and tons, dozens and dozens of songs that I haven't made into a song yet. They're just the words. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, the lyrics are not normal, really. I, I, I actually I could get into being influenced by the band Ween and um, a kind of almost weird, funny, but still deep kind of music. Mm -hmm. um, so is that kind of what would that describe? The stuff that that you like growing up, like like Ween and those albums, like Wilco and, I and think, groups like yeah, that. Yeah, I think or, mostly or? I've liked. Um, it seems like punk rock has been the main theme through mm -hmm. my life, and actually like hardcore punk, like Minor Threat, The Exploited, um, stuff like that, uh, Black Flag, early Black Flag and stuff. Uh, it seems like punk rock has really been fun for me, but. Um, not a huge pop fan, but I have gotten into pop. Um, I, I don't know. It seems mm -hmm. like I, I like all music. Well, the thing that I like about your voice is um, you can hit those high notes. and. Uh, oh, I can get really high. Yeah. It scares me because I didn't used to be able to do that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. when, my, when I was a teenager, I could never hit high notes, and it hurt my throat. And I don't know if it's because I've tried over and over despite not being able to, but now I can get really high. Um, I do some covers, um, a runaway, um, some ones that get really high, and um, yeah. I'd love to hear some of those sometime. Yeah, I could get deep too, though. Like I, I, that's the thing I used to tell my band is like I'm all, uh, I'm not really impressed by how I sing or anything. The only thing that impresses me that I can do is if I can go as low as I can go or as high as I can go. It always impresses me. <laughs> like I'm like, cause I'm in my mind all of a sudden I, I. The art ends, and I'm just like, wow, that's high. Like, how am I doing that? <laughs> the reality of it hits me. It's like, what? It's well, let's, let's hear another one then. And, and hey, you want to mention our, our guest that's hanging out with us here? Oh, yeah, studio, that's our buddy. Here. I know. We haven't even <laughs> mentioned it. Uh, I've been watching this guy all, the whole time here. Guillermo Mash, a.k.a. Well, Guillermo is what he goes by. Without a roof, sometimes what they call him. I first met him at the first world record event. Which we're doing again, um, you know, as you know, down low. Yes. Is uh, with Julian and I playing Chico, but Guillermo was the witness there. He, they called the, him the superstar because he was always there, um, not only being a witness, uh, official witness, but also like a taking... Jehovah's Witness too, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, but he takes a lot of pictures and does graphic design and um, mm -hmm. and 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 the, the but the main thing about him that's awesome is that. He's an advocate for um, homelessness in mm -hmm. Chico. So um, you watch his Without a Roof um, series on YouTube, and he goes around, and there's a lot of homeless musicians, so you get a yeah. lot of music, and just 
their insight about the things which didn't is, didn't, no didn't one of our local uh, he was he was it was in Chico News and Review he was a homeless guy an, an American Indian guy um, Clem yeah passed away Clem. recently Clem no 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 he didn't pass away he just got housed Dakota yeah. Dakota passed yeah. away. Oh, right? Dakota down there. Did by you the, know him? Yeah. Train I station. knew him. Yeah, I didn't know him real well, but I knew him. And so also uh, Peace and Social Justice, right? That's your show? Yeah, I do that show, yeah. Are they, you're, yeah, you're involved in that. I'm just a witness. I, my laptop was broken, so I happened to be here, and I'm like, I want to see And I've been this, on your show, and you've had live music on your <laughs> show as that. well. Yeah, I love um, live music. <laughs> yeah, he does. So thank you, Foxy Jeff. He's a big fan of local art, and he well, goes to the shows. Yeah. Out, he's out there and at night. Um, well, it's great to have you hanging out in the studio with us today. Thanks for having and, uh, me. we got Foxy Jeff. This is FM 90.1 KCFR Chico. And we're filming this. And uh, so, yeah, maybe you'll post this later. And I'd love to hear Got another it. song if you're ready. <laughs> I will not post myself. <laughs> no, I will when I get old. We'll talk uh, Marina into talking you into it. How's that? Sure. Okay, this, so this is the song I mentioned that I, I wrote half of it when I was 10. Well, maybe not half, maybe like a quarter of it when I was 10. And then, um, I actually, it was a rap when I was 10, um, the first part of it. The second part I wrote, um, and they're lyrics that I always really liked, but I never really made it into a song. So I'm kind of just doing that now. This is the first time that is going to occur. Um, it's really simple, but the lyrics are hilarious in a way, and kind of controversial at times. <laughs> but... It's called Drink Some Wine. <laughs> the first part about the wine that's what's hilarious I actually wrote this as a 10 year old I said um, later that night I was running real late I turned on the TV and got ready for my date I picked her up about a quarter to nine I said let's chill out and drink some wine and you wrote that when I you were 10? 10 years old and your mother heard I, you writing that you I, wrote, I don't no? think she's ever heard of it, but <laughs> I had no idea I, what, what, I mean I dating and I just I just thought it sounded cool <laughs> it's hilarious that's great, man. That's good stuff. You know, I, I could hear like hit potential with some of that stuff. It yeah, it yeah, reminds I'm, me of multiple different you know genres and songs that I heard growing up too as well. I look like everybody with glasses. So depending on how old the person is, 
people come up to me wherever Chico State Buddy or Holly. Yeah, they're like, you know, you look exactly like, and I'm like, well, depending on your age, it's either Buddy Holly, the dude from Weezer, Elvis Costello. Exactly. Isn't that funny? Just because of the glasses. Yeah, if I take off these glasses, cover the um, okay is is really a little more complicated. Everything I've done so far, my own stuff is really simple. I think because I'm really um, um, singer oriented, but also lyric oriented, and I don't really pay that much attention about the chords and things like that. Because, I mean, I like the Ramones a lot, and they only have three chords in most of their songs. So, But this uh, changes it up a little bit and has different um, dynamics. So I'm going to go ahead and play this song. Um, I forgot what, which one I'm playing, but I'm going to play it. <laughs> Foxy Jeff on FM 90.1 KCFR Chico. Next up, we've got Peter Ratner with Not Necessarily Nashville taking you up to 5 o'clock. <coughs> Can I do that? Go for it. That was heavy stuff, right? Crazy, yeah, crazy, heavy. Um, yeah, anytime a, another artist wants to make a graphic that they're going to play with me and they haven't heard me, they're like, what do you, what's your music like? And I'm always like, it's really dramatic, actually. <laughs> a lot of the stuff I do is like abnormally dramatic, which is weird because I don't even watch dramas, movies. I'm not dramatic at all in any way, but my music is like some, that's what I really feel good about. Do you ever use your own music for uh, background music for your films? Yeah, I actually have. Um, I use some of the old stuff that I made that's just really mm -hmm. simple. I could see you down the road too being more of being a producer as well, you know, of other artists. You know? Yeah. And Well, um, well I mean, te technology is something that I've really had to learn to do um, 
<laughs> singing is something that I just really love to do and, and I forget about all my cares and stresses when I'm singing. I love to be on stage. I feel really good and actually more confident than I normally feel. I feel on stage more than any other time in my life. Normally I have like anxiety and mm -hmm. and things like that. It feels really good to sing. I love it. Well, that's great. I want to thank you. We have only just like two minutes left, and okay. then we've uh, Peter Ratner is getting ready to uh, bring yeah. you, not necessarily Nashville. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, thank you for everything you do for our community. And is there any last thoughts you have, or anybody you want to say uh, anything to? Or? I want to thank you, Brad, uh, for inviting me on the show, and all you've done um, locally, uh, connecting also one of the top contributors along with Guillermo, who is, it's becoming more and more important to um, support the scene. And he's, not only does he have this thing that's more important than music, which is being an advocate for the more unfortunate people in society, but also he also supports the scene. He's gone to so many of my shows yeah. and wanted to sit in here. Um, so yeah, Just buying a ticket, awesome. buying, buying an artist CD at a show, a yeah. little bit of merch, that's always really a good thing. Just seeing his to face there, going. shining and smiling, I've seen him yeah. at like at least half a dozen of my shows, I think. Yeah. Smiling, and, and I like that, that's good. Supporting Did you scene. know, though, that he's legally deaf? Did you know that? No. He's not hearing a lot of <laughs> I'm No just wonder kidding. he's just nodding and smiling at the show. <laughs> So. I'm just kidding, William. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show.